Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I'm Dr. Abstract. This is the second video on arrays. So if you go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com, scroll on down to the school, we are on lesson five, arrays and loops. So in the last lesson on arrays, we saw how to make an array. There's the array literal. We saw how to access elements of the array with the array access operator and also assign values to members of an array. We saw the array property of length, but we did not see any of these methods. We did, however, talk about multidimensional arrays and why we would use an array or an object. So you're welcome to come here and have a review of all of that, as well as a practice through creating arrays and working with arrays. We're going to come back for another video and talk about loops, but that's a little bit later on. Okay. So why don't we go take a look at what we had done before. We've already got a page going. And we called it Lesson 05. And there's where we ended on making a multi-dimensional array. How about we just underneath there, we'll start off with uh, creating an array called Const, hmm, let's see, candies. Ah, oh, yes, candies is equal to a nothing, an empty array. Let's see how we can add some things to the array. If we wanted to, we could say candies at zero is equal to, hmm, chocolate. Chocolate kind of transcends candies, but anyway, we won't worry too much about that. And then why don't we zog candies. So here what we're doing is we're using the array access operator, and we're assigning chocolate to the first thing in the array. And if you assign it to something later on, we have nothing in there, but if you assign it to something later on, then it makes a whole bunch of, I think they're undefined, elements until it gets to the index that you've you've said and if we refresh here refresh and f12 there we have our array and it says chocolate in it so that's one way to add things another way is with a method so I'll comment that out another way is with a method of the array called push candies dot push and we push hmm how about a gum in there there we go so candies dot push gum gum will push it onto the end of the array although you may not be able to tell now the array says gum if we already had chocolate in there then we will have chocolate followed by gum. Let's try her out. Chocolate and then gum. What do you know? So push adds to the end. Adds to end. And you can push several things at once with a comma in here and then another thing, uh, gum and... <laughs> Why am I drawing a blank on candies? How could it be? <laughs> gum chocolate is that the only type of candy there is there's a lollipop lolly pop <laughs> funny word isn't it and now we've got chocolate gum and lollipop so if you want you can push all the way Whatever. um there's also a way that you can uh, take something off the end of an array. So we will zog candies.pop. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Pop. 
pop is <laughs> candies.pop. Now we're only going to zog it. And then I suppose we want to zog the array, which we are doing. Yep, yeah, there's the zog of candies. So we're going to zog what we've popped. And that will be gum. Refresh. So there is us zogging gum. And note that our array no longer has gum on the end. It's been popped off the end. <laughs> Push and pop. They're cute, huh? Um, well, just wait until you see the next two. So this is the end of the array. So this takes off the end. And note that it returns what it's taken as well. So we could store that in a variable or a constant if we wanted whatever we popped. Here we've just zogged it. All right, well, what about the beginning? So uh, if you want to take something off the beginning, I'll tell you what, why don't we not push? So I'll comment out, oh, pushing's good. We won't pop. <laughs> okay, so we're not going to pop anymore. Instead, we will leave chocolate and gum. So now we still have the array of chocolate and gum. And what I'm going to do is take something off the beginning. So, and we'll zog what we took off the beginning as well. Candies dot shift. There we go. Candies dot shift will take off the start from the start. Take off from the start. Take from the start. <laughs> Good enough. Takes from the end. Ah, right. Okay, candies dot shift. Here we go. So uh, do you know what this will say then? We refresh. Chocolate. So it took chocolate off the beginning of the array, and now the array is just gum. If we want to put something on the beginning, then it's candies. You'll never guess it. Unshift. It's like, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Are you serious? Why wasn't it uh, candies.push? Candies.unpush. <laughs> anyway, uh, so candies.unshift, and here we have to put something there. So instead, we'll put lollipop. Lolly, hey, it's the return of the lollipop. I think that's how you spell lollipop. It's not, it, it could be a lolly like that, but I think lollipop is just with an I. <laughs> I haven't looked it up. All right, so candies.unshift, this will add to the start. Of the array. All right, are you ready? So what will our array be? We've taken off chocolate, we've still taken off chocolate, and we're adding lollipop in front of gum. So you refresh here, we took off chocolate, and now we have lollipop and then gum. Great. So you'll just have to remember those things. There's a fun story that goes along with those. Uh, it was an early coder back uh, maybe in the 50s or something like that was seeing uh, people work uh, or a dishwasher work in a, in a lineup in a cafeteria and there was uh, as the dishes or the trays were being cleaned or something I can't remember if they're being cleaned or dispensed or whatever the terminology they used there perhaps they worked in that location the terminology they used is uh, push and pop for adding trays to the top and shift and unshift for adding and removing trays at the bottom. Adding and removing at the top, adding and removing at the bottom. Isn't that neat? So they adopted that when they created the language and coders have ever used that ever since. You should probably look that up in Wikipedia to get the exact details. <laughs> Alrighty, so those are four methods of an array. A couple others then. There's also um, if you want to create an array from a string, this is not a method of an array, but say you had a string, it looks something like this. Let mm, names equal Dan, comma, George, comma, uh, Lisa. There we go. So if we had a string like that, well, we might want to make it easier on ourselves. A string like that, that's a comma separated or a comma delimited string. Then we can make an array from that using a method of a string. And so that would look like this. Let um, 
and I'll just put ARR equal to names dot split. So we're going to split on the comma. And what that does is it splits up the string on the comma and it creates an array with Dan, George, and Lisa. Should I try it? Uh, Zog R. R. <laughs> and we refresh here. Refresh. Now we have an array with Dan, George, and Lisa, and we can access the array at one would give us George. So we refresh here. The array at one is giving us George. So hey, great, that's an array. We can also do the opposite and we can join those. So we can say zog r dot join. So join is a method of an array. Join instead with a dash, for instance. So r, our array, dot join with a dash. And let's see what we get. Dan dash George dash Lisa. Okay, so those are some things that you might want to use that we quite often use. How could we find out if there is something in the array that could be handy? That's the index of method. So do we have an array around? Uh, we have R, I guess, but let's not use R. We've got candies. Let's use candies. Okay, so um, we can say zog candies dot index of chocolate. Now I can't because I can't remember if, can, if chocolate's still in the array. So this is going to tell us what index number chocolate is inside of candies. All right, let's try her out. Let me refresh here. Minus one. Look, there's the array. It's only got lollipop and gum in it. So minus one is the answer. Be careful. Zero is not the answer. So uh, what about gum? What's the index of gum? So hopefully this will say zero, one. So it should say one. And we refresh here. One is the index of gum. So index of is a method that tells you what index something is in an array. And you can hunt for stuff in an array like this. Once you get that, you could, you could do various things. Um, there's two methods uh, that are similar. One's called slice and one is called splice. So the spl splice is a little bit more handy because that allows you to insert something into an array. So let's take a look at splice. You can look at slice and at your leisure. It's similar. So are you ready? Uh, candies dot splice. And here we would give it the index that we want to uh, operate on. This, is, this can also be used to delete parts of an array as well. But we're going to insert something between lollipop. Let's insert chocolate between lollipop and gum. So that would be at index uh, one, I think. And then we would put what we want to splice in there. <laughs> or is it how many do we want to remove? I can't remember. It might be how many we want to remove first. Uh, anyway, let's try inserting something. We'll see if it works. Chocolate. I always have to look up splice myself. And we won't delete any. Uh, I suspect this isn't going to work. And we want to then zog candies. I'm going to pull the zogging from there. Oh, we'll leave. We'll leave that one there and we'll copy it down here as well. Sorry for my lack of semicolons. So we're going to zog candies again once we try this. We refresh. Well, it didn't seem to work, did it? <laughs> so we could look it up or I could just try sticking a remove zero and see if this works. 
Okay, and if it does, we'll come back and talk about it. There we go. Okay, and that's what it is. So what this is, what the parameters are, is the starting index. Now that's tricky in its own, own self. Like if we wanted to put it between the zero element and the one element, what's the starting index? Zero or is it one? Well, the way I thought of it is how would we splice something onto the beginning if um, and then we'd have to splice it like negative one to have it insert. So I figured that one would mean splice after the zero element. This one, so that's a starting index. The zero here is how many to remove followed by uh, what to insert. Now, I think it's multiple. So I think we can insert chocolate and somebody give me another candy. Come on, think there. Were you going to say <laughs> a gummy? <laughs> it's, kind of, it's, kind of, it's too much like, I, I don't know how to spell it. It's too much like gum in the first place. We've got chocolate. There must be some other kind of candy. There's like a, a mint, maybe. Okay, how about that? A mint. Oh. Let's see if it works. It's going to do it. We refresh there sure enough it did so that's how you do chocolate and mint be careful uh, you might think oh perhaps we could just insert an array and then that will do it well it does work but not how you expect maybe so what that's doing is it's making a lollipop then it inserts the array as you've asked and that array is yet another array. It's the chocolate and mint array. So here's the zero elements lollipop. The one element is chocolate and mint. And then there's gum. So that's not exactly what we wanted to do. You just carry on and give it more parameters if you want to insert multiple ones there. What if we said delete one element? So now gum is going to be gone. It's going to it's going to start with lollipop. It will delete one element from this location and insert chocolate. So that looks like this. Refresh. Lollipop and chocolate. Gum has been deleted. So if you wanted to delete a few elements in the middle of an array somewhere, you can do it. If you're just deleting, you don't do any inserting. If you want to insert some elements, well, we saw that. Then you just say don't delete. And you can also delete and insert. So splice is kind of does a whole bunch of stuff uh, like that. There is also the issue of an array as a reference. So you run into that. Watch this. For instance, if we say um, let my candies equal candies like that. Um, and then we make a change. So we'll do that earlier on. Let's, let's uh, make candies here or something. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Somewhere up here. My candies. Then we're going and we're doing all of this. Uh, we found the index of we're doing this splicing of chocolate. So chocolate was spliced into candies. It wasn't spliced into my candies. So let's see what my candies are. I would expect that maybe can uh, my candies doesn't have chocolate put in there. And we refresh here. Well, what do you know? My candies on line 101, my candies does have chocolate in it. Huh. Okay, so what's going on here is that uh, let my candies equal to candies is not copying the array. It is referencing the same array object. So you have to be a little bit careful there. To remedy that problem of having uh, candies or my candies be a reference to candies, we can use slice. So if we, the slice method, if we go dot slice here, what this what slice will do is it will make a copy of the array so if you uh, say go two here it would copy the array from index two until the end or if you go 
2 comma 5 common there it would copy indexes 2 to index 5 and make a copy if you don't put anything or indeed 0 but if you don't put anything there it will just make a copy from the beginning now Zim also has copy so uh, I think that's a bit easier to remember copy copies both arrays or object literals so that's how we would do it in Zim but in JavaScript you can slice that and what this does make a copy of candies so candies um, or sorry it makes a copy of candies puts it in my candies so my candies would now not include chocolate shall we see let me refresh here so here's where it included chocolate refresh now my candies does not include chocolate because we made a copy of the array and stored it in my candies then we added chocolate to candies all right so uh, that's splice and a little bit of slice and we've seen index of we've seen how to add things on the beginning and on at the end there's also a, a reverse, so we can make a reverse of the array. Let's um, try that. Candies dot reverse. Now the question is, is what exactly is going to happen to candies? Let's try reversing it here. Candies dot reverse. So the question is, does this permanently alter the array, or does it sort of make a temporary copy of the array? and to give you that so let's try her out if we see gum chocolate lollipop then we know that reverse will permanently reverse the existing array uh, well not permanently but reverses the existing array gum chocolate lollipop it does indeed so from now on that's reversed there's also a sort well we'll leave reverse there <laughs> we'll re reverse it and then sort it. I guess it won't matter. <laughs> Candies dot sort. And be careful, that's a sort by string. In this case, that works out well for us. Chocolate, sorry, chocolate, gum, and lollipop. Okay, so that's a sorted. If you're going to sort by a number, uh, it, it's um, a little bit more tricky. You've got to pass a function, a sorting function in there. Um, uh, you can look that up and find a, find an answer in Stack Overflow. There's also ES6 or new JavaScript ways to deal with certain things that I'm showing you with arrays and array methods. Uh, there's probably more things that we can do. There's deconstructing and uh, anyway, I don't, I'm not going to show you all of those here in this lesson. So we have seen the basics of arrays then. We've seen the methods now, a bunch of methods that are handy for us. I can't think of any other methods off the top of my head. Why don't we just take a peek at the lessons back here in Zim School and see if there's any in the lessons that might uh, help us. So here's the reference. Here's the ones that we were looking at. We've got push, pop, shift, unshift, sort, index of, splice, and concat. Ah, okay. So concat adds a second array. So if we want to join one array with another, we can do that as well. Shall we see that? There's where we're zogging. We'll add it to candies. Candies dot concat. Uh, if we had a second array to add, now this is slightly different where we're actually putting the array in here. And now we say, uh, oh, there's also the spread operator. Oh, that's cool. Black balls. Black balls. And licorice. Licorice. How do you spell licorice? Is that good? So we're going to concat those on to candies and let's have a look. We refresh here. And we lost it. Did we zog it after? I thought we did. I think it makes a new array. Yeah, concat's another thing that returns a different array. So it didn't change candies, but it is returning a new array that then we would have to store here. So uh, const new candies is equal to that. 
So here again, trickiness. When we reverse or sort, it works on the same array. When we concat, it returns a new array. So now we are going to have to zog not only candies and my candies, but copy this and new candies. And now we refresh here. And our new array is chocolate, gum, lollipop, black balls, and licorice. So there we go. Okay, I think that's a good place to end her off. This has been a Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. And this one. Ooh, imagine running through the world like this with rings. And here's the way out. And the inverted. So zombie. That's right. All that, by the way, was pre-Google Cardboard. That's a cardboard box on my head up there <laughs> on a bicycle helmet. We've all got one. We just made a virtual reality or a mediated reality helmet, augmented reality if you want. Augmented means to add. Mediated is both add and diminished. Augmented and diminished reality is mediated reality. So there's a mediated reality helmet made for about five bucks with your own device. Uh, you know, that used to cost $20,000, maybe even more. All right, so creative coding, come on back, and we're going to see a Learn JavaScript that uh, deals with loops. Woot woot, can't wait. Ciao. Dr. Abstract out.